Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of AWS, Amazon Web Services reInvent 2017. Amazon Web Services annual conference, 45,000 people here. Five years in a row for theCUBE, and we're going to be continuing to cover years and decades after. It's on a, on a tear. I'm John Furrier, my co-stu Miniman. Exciting times, one of the biggest themes here is AI, IoT, data, deep learning, deep lens, all the stuff that's been really trending has been really popular at the show, and the person behind that, Amazon, is Swami, he's the Vice President of Machine Learning at AWS, among other things, deep learning and data. Welcome to theCUBE, good to oh, see you. Excited to be here. Thanks for coming on. You guys, you're the star of the show. Your team put out some great announcements. Congratulations, we're seeing new abstraction layers of, of complexity going away. You yeah. guys have made it easy to do voice, machine learning, all this great stuff. Yeah. What, yeah. Are, you, what are you most excited about? I mean, so many good things. Can I you see, pick a child and what I mean? I don't want to pick my favorite uh, child among all my children, but uh, our goal is to actually put machine learning capabilities in the hands of all developers and data scientists. Uh, that's why, I mean, we want to actually provide different kinds of capabilities, right from like uh, machine learning developers who want to build their own machine learning models. That's where SageMaker is an end-to-end -end platform that is, uh, lets people build, train, and deploy these models in a one-click fashion. That, uh, and it supports all popular deep learning frameworks. Uh, it can be TensorFlow, MXNet, or PyTorch. And uh, we also not only help train, but automatically tune where we use machine learning for machine learning to build these things. I mean, it's very powerful. And uh, the other thing we are excited about is the API services that you talked about, the new abstraction layer where app developers who do not want to know anything about machine learning, but they want to transcribe their audio to convert from speech to text, or translate it, or understand the text, and or analyze videos. And uh, the other thing coming from academia where uh, I'm excited about this. I want to teach developers and students machine learning in a fun fashion, where they should be excited about machine learning. It's such a transformative capability. That's why actually we built a device uh, meant for learning machine learning in a hands-on fashion. That's called Deep Lens. And we have like our uh, developers right now in uh, reInvent, uh, where from the time they take to unbox, to actually build a computer vision application to build hot dog or not hot dog, yes. they can do it in less than 10 minutes. I mean, it's an amazing time to be a developer. <laughs> oh yeah. my God, Swam, Swami, I, I've had so many friends that have sat through that session. First of all, the people that sit through it, they get like a, a, a kit, so oh, they're super awesome. excited. Last year, it was the Echo Dot and everybody doing skills. This year, Deep Lens definitely seems to be the one that all the geeks are you know, playing with, really programming stuff. There's a bunch of other things here, but definitely some huge buzz and excitement. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. glad to hear. Talk about the, um, the, um, the culture at Amazon, because I know in, in covering you guys for so many years and knowing, being uh, intimate with a lot of the developers and your teams, you guys, have to work, you guys just don't launch products. You actually listen to customers. So you brought up uh, machine learning for developers. What specifically jumped out at you from talking to customers around making it easier? Was it, it was too hard? Was it, or it was confined to hardcore math-driven data scientists? Was it just the, the thirst and desire from machine learning? Um, or are you just doing this for societal benefits as like a philanthropy project? No, in Amazon we don't <laughs> build uh, technology because it's cool. We build technology because uh, that's what our customers want. Like 90 to 95% of our roadmap is influenced by what uh, listening to customers. The other five to 10% is us reading between the lines. And uh, one of the things uh, I actually, when I started playing with machine learning, having built a bunch of database storage and analytics products, what uh, when I started getting into deep learning and and various things I realized it's a transformative capability of these technologies, but it was too hard for developers to use it on a day-to-day -day fashion because these models were too hard to build and train or they didn't have the right level of abstraction. That's why we actually think of it as in a multi-layered strategy where we cater to expert practitioners and data scientists for them we have SageMaker, and then for app developers who do not want to know anything about machine learning, they're saying, I'll give you an audio file, transcribe it for me, or I'll give you text, 
get, get me insights or translate it. For them, we actually provide simple to use API services and so that they can actually get going without having to know anything about what is TensorFlow or PyTorch. So TensorFlow got a lot of attention because that really, uh, really engaged the developer community in the machine learning, current machine learning, because it was like, oh wow, this is cool. Yeah. Um, and then it got, I won't say hard to use, but I mean, it was high end. Are you guys responding to TensorFlow in particular, or are you responding to other forces? What was the driver? No, our driver is, uh, I mean, in Amazon, we have been using machine learning for like 20 years. I mean, since the, you know, like 1995, we have been leveraging machine learning for recommendation engine, fulfillment center where we use robots to pick packages, and then Alexa, of course, and uh, Amazon Go. But one of the things we actually hear is, while frameworks like TensorFlow or Apache MXNet or PyTorch is cool, it is just too hard for developers to make use of it. We actually don't mind if our users use Cafe or TensorFlow. We want them to be successful where they take from idea to production. And when we talk to developers, this process took anywhere from six to 18 months, and it should not be this hard. So we wanted to do what AWS did to IT industry for compute, storage, and databases. We want to do the same for machine learning by making it really easy to get started and consume it as a utility. So that was our uh, intent. Yeah, Swami, I, I wonder if you can tell us, we, we've been talking for years about kind of the flywheel of customers uh, for Amazon. What are the economies of scale that you get for the data uh, that you have there? I think about all the, 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 the training of, uh, you know, all the machine learning, uh, you know, the, the developers. How do you, you know, can you leverage the economies of scale uh, that Amazon has in all those kind of environments? You know, when you look at uh, machine learning, uh, machine learning tends to be mostly the icing on the cake. So even when you talk to like the expert professors uh, who are uh, the top 10 scientists in the world, the data that goes into the machine learning is going to be the determining factor for how good it is in terms of how well you train it and so forth. So this is where uh, data scientists keep saying the breadth of storage and database uh, and analytics offerings that exist really matter for them to build highly accurate models. Yeah. And, uh, when you talk about not just the data, but actually the underlying database technology and storage technology really is uh, important. And S3 is the world's most powerful data lake that exists that is highly secure, reliable, scalable, and cost effective. And we really wanted to make sure customers like Digital Globe who store high resolution satellite imagery on S3 and Glacier, we wanted them to leverage ML capabilities in a really easy one-click fashion. That's important. So I got I gotta ask you about the roadmap because you say customers are having input on that. I, I would agree with you that you, that would be true because you guys have a track record there. But I gotta put the dots that I'm connecting in my mind right now forward by saying you guys are, are and telegraphing here, certainly we heard more Werner say it and Andy, data is key. Um, and opening up that data, and we're seeing New Relic here, uh, Sumo Logic, they're sharing anonymous data from usage, workloads, really instructive. Data is instructive for the marketplace, but you got to feed the models from the data. data. So the question for you is, you guys get so much data. It's really a systems management dream, it's an application performance dream, you get more use case data. Are you going to open that up, and what's the vision uh, behind it? Because it seems like you could offer more and more services Actually, we already have. If you look at uh, X-rays and uh, service that uh, we launched last year, and uh, that is one of the coolest capabilities. Even I'm a developer during the weekends when I write cool apps. Being able to dive into specific capabilities of what are the performance insights, where is the bottleneck, is so important that actually we are able to do things like X-raying into an application. So we are just getting started. I mean, the cloud kind of transformed how we are building applications. Now with machine learning, what is going to happen is we can even do various things like, okay, which is going to be the bottleneck or what kind of data sets? I mean, uh, it's just going to be such an amazing I mean, you time. Could, you could literally reimagine applications that are once dominant with all the data you have if you opened it up and then let me bring my data in. Then that would open up a bigger aperture of data. Wouldn't that make the machine learning and then AI more effective? Actually, you already can do similar things with Lex. Lex, uh, for think of it as it's an uh, automatic speech recognition, natural language understanding, where we are pre-trained on our data. 
but then to customize it for your own chatbots or voice applications, you can actually add your own intents and several things, and we customize the underlying deep learning model specific to your data, so you are leveraging the amount of data that we have trained in addition to specifically tuning for you. So it's only going to get better and better to your point. So that's, it's going to happen, it's already happening. It's, already, it's happening, yeah. yeah. So Swami, you know, great slate of announcements on the machine learning side. We're seeing the products get all updated. I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about the human side of things, because we've seen, seen a lot of focus, right, it, it's not just these tools, but it's the tools and the people putting those together. How does Amazon you know, help the, the data scientists, help uh, you know, retrain, help them get ready to be able to leverage and, and work even better with all of these tools? No, I mean, uh, machine learning, uh, we have seen some amazing uh, usage of uh, how developers are using machine learning. For example, Marinus Analytics is a uh, nonprofit organization that is, uh, goal is to fight uh, human trafficking. They use recognition, which is our image processing thing, to actually identify like persons of interest and victims uh, uh, and so that they can notify law enforcement officer. Like Royal National Institute of Blind, they actually are using poly or text-to-speech to generate audio books for visually impaired. Uh, so I'm really excited about uh, all the innovative applications that we can do to simply improve our everyday lives using machine learning. And it's yeah. such an early yeah. days. I mean, it's, and, I mean, Swami, the, the innovation is endless in my mind, but I want to get two thoughts from you. One startup, and one practitioner, because we, we've heard here in theCUBE, people come in saying, I can do so much more now, I got my EMR, it's so awesome, I can do this, they're solving problems, so yeah. obviously making it easy to use is, is super cool, so that's one, I want to get your thoughts on where that goes next. And two, startups. You're seeing a lot of startups kind of retooling on cloud economics, I call it post-2013. Yeah. You know, they don't need a lot of money, they can hit critical mass, they can, they can get market product market fit earlier, they can get economic value quicker. Mm -hmm. So they're changing the dynamics. But the worry is, how do I leverage the benefit of Amazon? Because I think we know Amazon's going to grow and all clouds grow, especially you guys. How do I play with Amazon? Where's the white space? Well, how do I engage, do I just, and how do I, once I'm on the platform, how do I become the new Relic or Splunk? How can I grow my marketplace and differentiate? Because Amazon might come out with something similar. So how do I stay in that cadence of growth if I'm a startup? No, I mean, uh, you see in AWS we have tens of thousands of partners, of course, like right from ISVs, SIs, and whatnot. So, I mean, software industry is an amazing industry where it's not like a winner-take-all market. You actually, for example, in the document management space, even though we have S3 and WorkDocs, it doesn't mean Dropbox and Box are not successful either, or and so forth. So, I think uh, what we provide in AWS is the same infrastructure for any startup or for my team, even though I build probably many of the underlying infrastructure. Nowadays for my AI team, it's literally like a startup, except I probably stay in an AWS building, but otherwise I don't get any internal APIs. It's the same API, so EC2, S3. It's a level playing field. By the way, together. everyone should know, he wrote DynamoDB uh, as an intern, or what was that? <laughs> so, <laughs> and then did. SQS. <laughs> Um, rock star techie here, so it's great to have, you're what we call a tech athlete. Great to have you on. Okay, so no white space, just go, go for it. Right. It's the innovation is the key, and the key thing, I, I mean, what we have seen amazing startups who have done exceptionally well is they intently listen to customers and innovate and really look for what it matters uh, for their customers and go for it. All right, biggest buzz of the show that you're from your group, what it, what's your biggest buzz from the show here? Deep, deep, Deep Lens? Deep Lens, uh, deep lens has been, uh, our idea was to actually come up with a uh, fun way to learn uh, machine learning. Yeah. And uh, machine learning, it used to be, even until recently, actually, as early as last week, it was actually an intimidating thing for developers to learn. While there is, it's yeah. all the buzz, it was not really straightforward for developers to use it. So we thought, hey, what is the fun way for developers to yeah. get engaged and uh, build machine learning? And uh, that's why we actually can see deep lens so that you can actually build fun applications. I talked about hot dog, not hot dog. I'm personally going to be building what I call as a bear cam because I, I live in the suburbs of Seattle where uh, we actually have bears visiting our backyard, digging our trash. I want to actually have 
deep lens uh, with a pre-trained model that I'm going to train to detect bears, that it sends me a message through SQS and SNS, so I get a text. All right, so here's, a, here's, an, here's an idea we want to do. Maybe your team can build it for us. Cube cam, we put the deep lens here, and then as anyone goes by, if they're a Twitter follower of the cube, oh, they can send awesome. me a message. <laughs> <laughs> Swami, great stuff, deep learning. Again, more goodness coming. That's awesome. What are you excited about? What are you most excited about? I think uh, if you see in Amazon, we have a phrase called it's day one. Even though we are a 22 year old company, I jokingly tell my team that it's day one for us, except we just woke up and we haven't even had a cup of coffee yet. So, I mean, it is, we had just crashed the surface with machine learning. There is so much stuff to do. I mean, super excited about this space. And your goals for this year is what? What's your goals? Uh, our goals for this year was to put machine learning capabilities in the hands of all developers of all skill levels. I think we have done pretty well so far, I all think. All right, well congratulations. Swami here on theCUBE, Vice President of Machine Learning and a lot more, all those applications that were announced Wednesday along with the deep learning, the AI, and the deep lens, all part of his uh, innovative team here at Amazon. Changing the game, it's theCUBE doing our part, bringing data to you, video, and, and more coverage. Go to siliconangle.com for all the stories, wikibon.com for research, and of course, thecube.net. I'm John Forrest, Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back.